Hey guys, so this is just a little add-on to working on your jack shaft, your secondary clutch. So the project went fairly smooth for me. I had to pull the secondary so that I could replace the two lower bolts on the secondary bearing shot tower, which was a recall on the 2018 Skidoo model snowmobiles, which we have right here. Both of mine had fallen out. My problem was a very metallic engine rattle. Um, made me think that a connecting rod crank bearing was going out. A lot of vibration, a lot of rattle. Got it home, trying to diagnose the sled while it was idling. I also had a bolt in the bottom of my belly pan. So while the engine was idling, looking for that bolt, which looked like a head bolt, an injector bolt, um, searching the motor. I happened to put my hand on the secondary to support myself while I was digging and the rattle went away. Gave the secondary a good hard shake and there was a lot of movement in there. The aluminum bracket that comes off the bulkhead supporting the jack shaft, we refer to as the secondary bearing tower, okay? And it turns out that whole thing was wobbling around and loose. So my metallic rattle thankfully wasn't a connecting rod bearing. It was the entire housing and, and tower holding the secondary being loose, vibrating on the bulkhead. The front bolt of that is your engine mount. So the whole thing was held together by one rubberized bolt. The fix, I guess there was a recall in 2018 for those two lower bolts. And here's a picture. So my bolts had fallen out. The threads were still good. They're threaded through the tower into the bulkhead. I still had good threads, but I went with longer bolts, which were M8 by 125 by 35 millimeter. Uh, it's a 12.9 class bolt. All I could find locally in my hardware stores was a 10.9 bolt. So I went with those. 35 millimeters is long enough to get you threads on the backside to nylock it to prevent the issue, which is your recall. So red lock tight, nylocks on the backside. I think the secondary tower is good to go. The process of that is removing your jack shaft and your secondary bolt, or excuse me, your secondary clutch and putting it back in, uh, the issue I had was getting that bearing to seat. So again, I didn't have information like a service manual. I looked at all the YouTube videos online and the one thing they missed was addressing if your bearing does not just easily seat into the cup on that tower, which is the problem I was having. So they talked about a tool on the upper side of your chain case, your spline jack shaft slides through, holds the upper gear and the collar behind that to your chain case. So Skidoo makes a tool that you thread in from this side through the gear into the jack shaft. You can slide your jack shaft back, unscrew the tool, and it supports your gear so the chain and the gear and the collar don't fall down into your the bottom of your chain case. Uh, rural Nevada, I didn't want to wait on ordering that tool. So the bolt was an M10 by 125. Uh, I have mine in the chain case, short bolt. I went to the hardware store, got the longest bolt I could source. You might be able to find longer if you're in a bigger city. Also in your hardware bins back there, you'll find steel uh, spacers. This is a 3 8 excuse me, 3 8 ID by three quarter long. I bought two of them and that's almost the inner diameter of your upper gear. So your upper gear, you can slide it right through and you have the same tool pretty much that Skidoo's offering you. You can pick it up from your hardware store to get the job done that day. Uh, the other problem, as I was fighting the bearing for four hours, twice I dropped because I would take this out trying to get wiggle room in other areas, forget that I had it out, pull back too far, boom, drop the gear and the chain and the collar down inside my chain case. If you are resourceful and great at breaking into old vehicles like I am, a coat hanger with a little hook on the back, I was able to go down through the chain case and fish my upper gear and my chain and my collar back up twice. So the odds and the gods on that one, don't give up hope if you drop your gear into your chain case, you might be able to fish it back up and save yourself the effort of tearing the whole chain case apart. Another little trick We'll go around to the retainer for the bearing here in just a second to address what I was missing on getting that bearing to seat. Take a cheap 13 millimeter wrench and put a slight bend 
in the handle. I could have bent this one more. I really didn't need to, but you can tell if I hold it straight, I have a downward bend here. That's to go into the nylock nut on your retainer behind everything and be able to turn that nut. Uh, the videos I recommend the swivel head ratchet wrench if you don't want to go down and spend 8, 10, 12, 15 bucks. And most of the time those things come in a kit, so you have to spend 20, 30, 40 bucks. Get yourself a cheap end wrench, put on block wood, whack away with it on a hammer until you get a bend to reach around behind. Let's go over and take a look at what I'm talking about right there. All right, so I've already got the retainer back in. Now that retainer with the nut right there, this retainer is what presses your bearing back in. Now when I was first putting this back together, I've worked with metal quite a bit. I didn't believe that the thickness of this metal being side loaded from the top while pushing the bearing from the bottom, I thought this was just a retainer. I didn't believe it was strong enough to bolt the shaft and press it. So I didn't even try, which is why I fought it for four hours. To get this bearing to seat inside the cup, you hand start your nut and this retainer presses everything into place. So what we're talking about with my wrench, as we back out, you can see you have to get down in there and with the slight bend on the wrench, I can get on the nut without having to buy a specialty wrench. So to finish up this video, the other issue you might have, uh, the four hours I struggled with this into the night and finally got on Facebook and social media, seeing what the fixes were, which is where I found out the retainer is how you press the bearing. Talked to multiple guys that did have issues that the retainer wasn't enough to press it in, that it would bend the bracket or they were having. So two answers to that question. Number one, guys were mentioning to apply heat to the cup on that aluminum tower. Not a lot of heat, not with a heavy torch, just a map torch. Some guys said a hair dryer is all it takes. Just get some warm metal and it was enough to seat that bearing fairly easy. Um, other guys mentioned, and I don't know how they did it because I don't see the room without digging, but it would be to come through, you probably have to pull your exhaust and get a long bar come in from this side while pressure is being applied to the secondary and tap the back side of that tower to get that bearing to seat. So those two options I didn't have to deal with. The retainer was enough to press the bearing back in and that's what the important thing to know here is. Um, that and somehow using a tool. Now the very first time I did it, I used a 3 8 old school Craftsman ratchet and the thickness of the handle was pretty darn close to the inside diameter of that upper gear. So I just shoved the ratchet in. And where I came into a problem there is to pull my primary, which I didn't do right away. I tipped it up on its side to use the water method, pour some water into the end, Teflon tape my bolt, run it down, pop the clutch. Well, when I did that, I tipped the sled up on its side. And I was very lucky this didn't slide out the bottom and drop the gear. It slid out and hit right on my exhaust cam. So I recommend if you do it to save yourself heartache, just pick up the little pieces down at your hardware store, thread it in and you know you won't lose. Uh, one thing I didn't do, add a big washer onto the end of your bolt. Uh, I haven't figured out the head is real close to catching, but maybe the gear will slide through. So. Again, if you're tipping your sled up on its side to pull the primary, um, work on your bearing on that side, do other things there, get yourself a big washer so that it saves you the chance of that upper bearing sliding all the way off. So bend yourself up a cheap 13 millimeter wrench, get yourself something to screw into the end of the jack shaft to hold your upper gear in place, and be prepared as last resort to use a hair dryer, minor heat, or a long bar coming in through this side as persuasion to get that bearing to seat on the upper tower. And don't forget, on the 2018s, possibly 2017s, I would assume, those two lower bolts, which I forgot while I was over there. Let's go take a look at those real fast. 
So as we come in right below the secondary, you can see the two gold bolts right there. Both of mine had fallen out. So like I said, uh, M8 by 125 by 35 millimeter. And you have very little room to get on the back side if your threads are still good going through the bulkhead. There. So I had the bolts threaded in. I screwed the nut on the back side. And then to tighten it, I would back out the bolt on the threads till the flange, or excuse me, the nylock hit on the back side. Then I would stick a wrench on it and turn the bolt from the front side and repeat that process back and forth. As you really can't turn the nut, you can't get a, a ratchet or a head back in there very good to turn. So I was just able to hold it. And I used loosening and tightening up these bolts on the outside to tighten up the nylock on the back side. So those are your secondary tower, which is that whole piece right there as I'm blurring out. You can see the bolts down at the bottom. So, so guys, sorry I didn't videotape any of the process of this. As I was doing the job, I thought it wasn't gonna be that hard. There are YouTube videos out there really good on explaining this process of removing the secondary in the jack shaft. Just that bearing, nobody mentioning what the deal was there is what brutalized me. So hopefully this video helps you guys out. Hashtag Side Hill Gill from HCO High Country Octane Films. Trying to help you out, save you the, uh, the heartache, the tears, and the pain that I go through. Hope this video helps you guys out. Thanks a bunch, guys. Check out more of High Country Octane on YouTube. And you can find me on Facebook over at Joe Gill, hashtag Side Hill Gill. And follow all of the adventures and any other tech stuff that comes along with Arctic Cat M8s and the Skidoo Gen 4s.